beloved people of God, welcome this morning to the Church of the Good Shepherd in Raleigh, North Carolina. I am the Reverend Joyce Corbin Cunningham, the Associate Rector of this parish, and I will be joined today by the Reverend Nancy Allison, who will be our preacher. This is a service of morning prayer, and you can find the bulletin on a, on a link close to where you clicked to join us this morning. Welcome. Let's just take some deep breaths and prepare ourselves to worship God together.
and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess, we confess that, that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the, the Father, Father and to the, the Son and to the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning. beginning is, is now, now and, and will, will be, be forever. forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. And now I invite you to join us as we pray the Venite. Come, Come let, let us sing, sing to the Lord. Lord. Let, let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the height of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, oh, that, that today you, you would hearken, hearken to his voice.
A reading from the second book of Samuel. When the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent in a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time when that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. In the sixth day, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she, much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative, Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who it was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. I don't know when the Ave Maria might have been prayed in this church of the Good Shepherd before. Episcopalians, Anglicans generally, are a little iffy about the importance of Mary to our faith. After all, didn't we go through a reformation 500 years ago to get rid of all those rosary beads and statues and pictures of virgins with sacred hearts? There's no doubt that Christianity went through a period when Jesus was almost pushed out of the picture so that a comforting, understanding, forgiving, and embracing mother figure could take center stage. The reformers were right when they said no to that. But the churches that have benefited from their teaching would be very wrong if they dismissed Mary or ignored her rightful time and place in faith. And that time is now. That place is here. Mary stands as the last link in the chain of faith that opens the world to Jesus, God incarnate. Just think, all down the ages, all the longing, all the prayers, all the revelations of prophets and sages, it all comes down to this one young, very young woman standing on the threshold of life. An ordinary girl from a very ordinary town of Nazareth with no particular skills or talents, no remarkable IQ, just a simple girl who is opened to the messenger of God. That's what angels are, messengers of God, vehicles of the spirit, mediums through which the ultimate reality of God can be conveyed 
within our very limited world of time and space. From the beginning of creation, through the long, dark fall of humankind away from the love and purposes of God, to follow our own shallow and selfish desires, the chain of human history comes down to this one solitary, teenaged girl standing on the threshold of womanhood. This one ordinary human being who is at last fully opened to the call and the truth and the grace of God. She is the last link in the chain of faith that allows the Christ to be born into this world. Hail Mary, full of grace. What is grace? The Catechism says it is God's favor towards us, unearned and undeserved. Grace, it goes on, by grace, it goes on, God forgives our sins, enlightens our minds, stirs our hearts, and strengthens our will. Grace is the life force of the living God pouring into us, shaping our lives according to the love and truth of God, and always according to the uniqueness of God's purpose for each one of us. Grace is God's life growing, forming, and directing our life. Grace allows us to give birth to what God has planted deep within us. If only we receive that grace in faith. I have a picture of a modern fresco of the Virgin Mary and the angel Gabriel over my fireplace. The two figures seem almost to be in a dance. One of Gabriel's arms is raised to heaven, bringing the power and the presence and the transforming spirit of God down to earth. And with the other hand, he points directly to the womb of Mary. One can almost feel the current of God's life ready to flow as an offering, as a gift into this open-hearted young woman. And in this fresco, Mary is shown to receive the grace of God fully by bowing her head in humility and gratitude and then she seems to enfold the angel's message around her by encircling it with the folds of her long blue cloak, wrapping it into the depths of her life and allowing it to grow in her womb. And by the way the artist paints her flowing garments, one sees, one anticipates the fruit of grace not stagnant or imprisoned within Mary, but flowing back into the world as the free gift of God's incarnate life to all who will receive it. This circular relationship of giving and receiving, of call and response, is the pattern of our life in God. It is the ultimate truth. Creative power is calling out to us, wanting to use us to incarnate God's life in this world. It all depends on how we receive that call, whether it will come to birth in us. If we are too distracted, if we are set on our own agendas, the world does not penetrate to the, the, the word does not penetrate to the depth of our being, because we don't open up to it. That's what sets Mary apart. She is opened in the fullness of her being, in her mind, her heart, her body. She is opened to the creative word of God and says yes to it. 
It is Mary's yes that is the last link in the chain of human history that allows the Christ to be born. Yes, be it on to me, according to your word. Let your power, your truth, your life force fill me and use me, even though I have no idea what this will mean or what it will cost. Still, be it on to me, according to your word. But, but it isn't that easy. The scripture says, Mary is greatly troubled and questions in her heart. How can this be? Does she sense, even now, that the child of God's grace will change everything? Will lead her to places she never wanted to go? Force her to endure pain and sorrow, still unimaginable at her young age? Will the life-giving word of God growing within her be too much for such a simple, ordinary girl. Don't be afraid, Mary. That's Gabriel's answer. Don't be afraid. Fear, that's what gets in the way of faith every time. The opposite of faith is not disbelief. The opposite of faith is fear. It is to pull back into our own limitations and not allow God's spirit, God's life-giving force to grow within us and send us in new directions. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I don't deserve this. Don't challenge me. Don't make me grow. I've got enough to cope with just as I am. No, no, no. Don't be afraid, Mary. You're right. It won't be easy. There will be plenty of tears. But the Holy Spirit will overshadow you and be your guide. You won't know where this new life of God's grace will lead you or how it will change you. But if you remain opened, if you say yes again and again, and again. Then the Holy Spirit will always be your strength and your guide. You may not know it, you may feel alone and deserted, but the Spirit of God will be there for you. The life force of God will help you grow. It will make you God's partner in the ever-changing dance of life. Yes, you will have sorrow, but you will also have joy, for you will be the means by which God's grace, God's true life, will become flesh and blood in this world and show forth the face of God in humankind. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, the angel's call is not just to Mary, it's to us all. We are all in the position of Mary every day of our lives. God is addressing each of us. Hail John, hail Margaret, hail Jim and Sally, full of grace. God's grace is continually pouring out towards us. We probably won't see it as clearly as an angel appearing to us, but for the record, we don't really know how the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary. Perhaps it was simply in the awareness of her young female body coming into the fullness of its woman's nature knowing that she was now capable of bearing life, in that, perhaps, she felt the call of God. God speaks to us in a myriad of ways, through our spouse, through our children and grandchildren, through the request of a friend or a panhandler on the street, through our conscience, telling us it's time to make amends 
and get back on the right track with those we've hurt and those we have not yet fully forgiven. Advent used to be a penitential season in the church. We've let go of that a bit, but it's still true that one of the best ways we can receive the grace of God is to let go of old hurts and truly forgive others and truly forgive ourselves so that there will be room within us for God's grace to come to birth in all the unique ways God is longing to be formed in each and every one of us. Like Mary, our one true calling on this earth is to show forth the grace and glory of God. Let me leave you with some words by that contemporary sage and prophet, Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear, she says, is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve this world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people will not feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us, it is in everyone. And as we let our light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. As we are limited, liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Hail Mary, and hail every one of us, for we are all called to be full of grace. Amen.
And now, beloved, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty creator, creator of heaven and earth. And earth. I, I believe, believe in, in Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy, Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, the, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. O Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope and we shall never hope in vain. Purify our conscience, almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. We pray for those who have died, especially those we name now, either silently or aloud. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. We commend to your loving care those who have asked for our prayers, especially Paul Hoke, Chris Yetter, Monty Holder, Jill Bryan, Ann Sanders, Hal Miller, Wilma Miller, Ed Barnes, Carolyn Beard, Eileen Wood, Carol, Pete Taylor, Suzanne Newton, Roy Wright, Janet Gillum, Vive Kershaw, Carolyn Owens, Bob Yates, Gina, Sophie Allen, David LaPasha, Ella Wood, Brian Smith, Marie Williams, Nick Smith, John Murphy, Mike Elliott, Margaret Hatcher, Allison Ziegelmeyer, Mike Webb, Miles Habel, Becky Lopez, Cora, Bill, Lynn, Debbie, Becky, Patty, Nolan, Daryl, Carson, Charlie, Elise Bullen, Laura and Ada Fouché, Meredith Vance, Harry Johnson Sr., Robbie Brake, Kelly McLeod Aldridge, Ray Dalgie, Allison Teisinger Brandt, Corey Brandt, Carlene Fuller, Reggie Fuller, Jason and Don Downs, Odie Kempt, and Susan. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, 
mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Father of, of all, all mercies, we, we your unworthy, unworthy servants, servants give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. May the God of hope fill us all with joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.